Solo Q legend. Holy God, just notice the Savix himself. Holy God. Solo Q hashtag. Solo Q hashtag. S1 and Savix. One of the most hyped duels of the entire series. S1's going to completely open. Oh, Hodge! Oh, During the heal. 3092. Oh, that's it. Savix. Wow. Savix. Spank. Wow. Spank. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Savix, I am a rank 1 Retribution Paladin, and in this video, I will be going over the talents, runes, and the gear for Season of Discovery. Keep in mind, today is November 27th, 2023. A lot of things might change along the line, just like the recent nerfs on Crusader Strike and Seal of Mattire. Went from 4 second to 6 second, and Seal of Mattire no longer hits 3 nearby targets. Was really excited for an AoE seal, but it's gone now. And with that being said, let's check out the talents. All right, firstly, I will be going over the optimal leveling talents. We will be going for Benediction for mana efficiency. Number two, you can go for either Deflection or Improved Blessing of Might. If you're playing with a lot of friends or in a group constantly, I would go with Blessing of Might since it makes your Blessing of Might very strong. My cat wants to say hi. If you're more of a solo player, you can go for Deflection parry equals faster swings faster swings big damage after having 10 points in you should be able to unlock seal of command the slower the weapon the higher percentage of the proc i believe it goes up to 46.67 percent and the next talent point will be into conviction for big damage and that is all 25 points yet that being said if you want to travel faster i would recommend pursuit of justice since it makes you move a little bit faster Turning in quests, running around the zones, it will add up. Now the next build is going to be for raid and dungeons. This all depends if you have another paladin or not. If you have another paladin in the group, make sure he takes this talent. So you don't have to spend points on that. And if that's the case, you can go Benediction, Improve Judgment, Improve Seal of the Crusader. Then you head for Seal of Command and spend the rest of the point in Conviction. If you want to be a team player, you probably want to go Improve Blessing of Might. And if you want mana efficiency, benediction, then same thing here. You can go for movement speed, but if you're trying to do the biggest damage in a raid or dungeon, you probably don't need this. So this is for team player, and this is for selfish big damage. All 25 points. So choose wisely, soldiers. Now before we do our PvP talents, I'm going to go over the runes. For the most damage, this also depends if you have two paladins or not. If you have two paladins, I would suggest the other paladin to go Horn of Lodron so you can take Divine Storm. Or if you want to be the paladin that buffs, you can take Horn of Lodron. It is only six agility and strength. It's not a whole lot at the level. Maybe it increases higher in the future, so it might be worth taking for the grouping buff. But for me, I'm going to be going Divine Storm, Crusader Strike, and Exorcism. Nothing really beneficial for Red Paladins here, and Exorcist for more damage. Okay, now we will be going over my favorite Retribution Paladin build. Number one, we will be going for Improved Blessing of Might, 5 points on that, 2 points into Improved Judgment, and 3 points into Benediction to unlock Seal of Command. There's Seal of Command, we definitely want Pursuit of Justice since we have no mobility as Paladins on Classic WoW. Unless you have a swiftness pot or engineering boots. Little gadgets here and there, skull of impending doom, the list goes on. Unless you don't have those items, you really don't have a gap closer. Then for the last remaining three points, we will go with conviction. Alright, now we will be going over the runes. For the chest rune, divine storm, obviously. Big AoE, you can even get a rogue out of stealth if you're lucky. I have yet to try Seal of Mattire. If it's good, I might play around it. But for now, I believe Divine Storm is more beneficial. Number two, you will go with Crusader Strike. All right, now we are in the fun part, the legs. You got a lot of runes to play around here with. Number one, Rebuke is an interrupt that Red Paladins don't have on Classic WoW, which is huge. And next, we have Inspiration Exemplar. Your inspiring presence periodically dispels fear and sleep effects on nearby party members. This is so good in a big PvP clash or if you're 1v1ing a warlock since their strongest ability is fear or even a priest. 
Yet, I feel like having Interrupt will be better for Priest. Next, we have Exorcist. Exorcism can now be casted on a target and has 100% increased critical chance against undead and demons. Now, this means if a Warlock is playing the meta spec, you can blast them and dispel them from the planet Earth. But this is where it gets tricky. Do you want to not get feared or do big damage? The choice is yours. I wish this was on a separate rune as well, so I can have Kick and then these two abilities. Exorcist or Inspiration. And the last rune will be Avenger's Shield. Now you might be wondering, a Red Paladin with a shield, but hear me out. I didn't play a Red Paladin in 2019 relaunch, play the Rogue instead because any good players could kite out a red and you can't really do anything about it. But having Avenger's Shield, you could swap out from two hand to sword and board, hurl the shield, and you can daze them, slowing them, allowing you to catch up a little bit. I don't think it interrupts or silences. If it does, that'd be great, but I'm not seeing any tool tips about it. And I'm not sure what the cooldown is going to be. Ideally, it's 15 second cooldown. So this might come in very, very handy against ranged classes such as hunters, mages, or druids that can really kite you out. And pretty much the same as PV. This will be the base talents and you switch up depending on what you fight. All right, now let us go over the gear. First piece of armor will be Spark Metal Coif. It is a helmet that gives you 9 strength, 8 spirit. It is a quest from Duskwood by killing Mobafet. Mobafel, that's his name. I always get his name messed up. So choose wisely when you do that quest. Don't forget to get the helmet. Secondly, we have the necklace High Tide Choker from Black Fathom Deeps. 25% drop chance, not a bad drop chance. And for the shoulders, we have the Sentry Shoulder of the Tiger. This is a world drop and they're random, generated, tiger, monkey, hawk, it goes always. If you can't get your hands on these, you do have other shoulders here that are world drop as well. So keep in mind, you can use the Auction House to check if they're here or not. If not, you can go for the Cutthroat Powders, which is pretty damn easy to get. For the Cloak, same thing as the shoulder. This is a world drop. If you cannot get this, go for the Shimmering Thresher Cape. Gives you 6 strength, 6 spirit, and a lot of resistance. It's dropped from Black Fathom Deeps. For the chest, this will be a blacksmith crafted item. Bind when equipped. You can probably hire a blacksmith to craft this for you by giving it mats or gold. If you don't have the gold for it, you can aim for the mutant scale breastplate, which drops an Wailing Cavern from the last mutant murloc boss. Uh, there is a craftable blacksmith chest, but I'll go over them later along with the glove you can choose over here. For the bracelets, you will be aiming for pugilist bracers, also dropped in RFK. Very low drop chance, so you can go for the hydrexian bangles or the binding of Sarah Kiss. That's a little bit better than 0.1. For the weapon, I suggest you first go for Varigan's Fist. It's a 100% chance to grit. You just have to complete the Paladin quest line and you get a guaranteed weapon. And then, if you can't get this, get the Gizmotron Mega Chopper. Has a lot of strength and agility on it. But it does require 75 engineering. Now here is the part of Glove. This is a craft item as well, such as the chest. I suggest going for the Glove because you get a little bit more value out of it. You get hit and you get 10% attack speed for 10 seconds. This will increase the generation of your threat, so be careful. Let make sure the tank has the threat level inbound before you pop it off. And the main reason I choose this over the Shifting Silver Breastplate is because the difference is the stats. It does give you hit as well, but this is kind of more for tanks. As a Red Paladin, you're not going to be taking a lot of hits, or you shouldn't be in raids or dungeons. So I'd say go for Shining Silver Breastplate. Unless you're PvPing and you want to try this out, go for it. For the belt, we are going for Cold Bronze Grasp. It drops in Wailing Cavern, Lord Cold Bronze. I'm not sure if we're going to have Nomargon open because they did say Nomargon is going to be a raid, or they didn't really say it, but... I think there was like a little hint that they were going to do Nomargon and SM, I think. So Nomargon might not be unlocked, but if it is, go for the Trip Runner Dungarees. It is a quest for Nomargon. And for your feet, same thing as the Shoulder and Cloak, it's a world drop. If you cannot get your hands on this, go for Feet of Lynx. Alright, we're almost done. We have the rings here. 
First, I'm going to cover the Silver Lane Family Seal. This is a drop from Shadowfang Keeps. And the second one, it is a world drop. So if you can't get your hands on this, I would go for a Seal of Rin. And lastly, the Trinkets. This is from Black Fathom Deeps, Avengers Void Pearl. You're going for that 10% attack power. And lastly, the Arena Grandmaster. This one might be a little bit hard to get for you. So I would aim for Rune of Duty, if anything. If you can't get your hands on these. But if you do, it's a big amount of Absorb and 1% Dodge. And that is pretty much it. Hope this helped out and you get a general idea of Red Paladins. If I was weak on covering anything, feel free to tune in my stream and ask a question. Or I probably have a Discord page with all the informations. And another reminder, like I said earlier, we might get hot fixes here and there. So if that happens, I'll pin a comment saying this guide is outdated. And I'll give you a link to the new one or a new page. I gotta throw this out there because... I've made a lot of guides in Retail WoW and in Classic, and I still get comments from players saying, is this the right build, whatnot, and no, they're not. It's outdated. It's all out Some of them are really outdated, and people still watch them, so just letting you guys know. Anyways, good luck out there in Season of Discovery, and I'll see you in the PvP world. Peace.